Good evening, everyone. It's really great to see everyone. It's also nice to be back in California. I've been on the road for two weeks teaching um, all over the country, teaching speed lighters. And so this is turn four of my four corners of the USA tour. Wasn't really intended that way, but um, I was in the Northwest and then the Northeast and then all the way down in Florida. And then yesterday, in fact, this morning I was in North Carolina. So US Airways did their job and got me here. And it's great to see so many familiar faces. And for those who I've not met before, I look forward to getting to know you a little bit and helping you down the path as a speed lighter. So I want to do a quick survey tonight because we're going to focus, of course, on the new 600 EXRT system. How many people here are here because you're curious about whether it's really worth upgrading from your current speed light to the new system? Wow, okay, so a whole bunch. Of, a whole bunch. How many of you are here because you have a 600 EXRT or two or whatever, and you'd like to know how to push the buttons and the dials, okay? So like the other half of the group, all right, fair enough, fair enough. And who here, anyone here interested in considering how to integrate the new Speedlight system into like studio strobes? Okay, wow, okay, so that's like the other half of the other half of the other half. Good, good, good. All right, well onward. We are going to have a great time tonight in terms of talking about this new gear. I'll have to say I feel really fortunate because I was one of the first people in the United States last winter to have the new gear. I had an opportunity to use it and to blog it, um, to do some video with it, and I've been going nonstop with the new 600EX, and I have lots of great, great insights and bits of info to share with you. For those of you who aren't familiar with the work that I do directly, um, I hide my portfolio on the web at sillarena.com. And by the way, if you'd like to continue the dialogue, if you've got a question or whatever, I'm really sincere in terms of trying to share my knowledge on an ongoing basis, so feel free. Just kick me an email at sill at sillarena.com. And it really helps if you put like Canon Speedlight question in this subject line so that I can pay more attention to your email than just the random spams that I get. I blog um, on, a, on a kind of sporadic basis at Pixelated. Dot com, and that's a play on my name. So if you notice in the middle of it, it says S-Y-L. And then if you're in the Twitter sphere, um, I'm on Twitter at Sill underscore Arena. In fact, I just tweeted the fact that we're starting. So um, I, love, I love Twitter as well. So those are the three places you can find me on the web most often. A little bit on Google+, a little bit on Facebook, but these are the three main areas. I do have a couple of books out. Um, many of you are familiar with me because two years ago, Peach Pit Press published my Speedlighter's Handbook, which is 400 pages of the how-to and why-to of all things Canon Flash pre-600 EXRT. So um, the answer, if you're curious, is there going to be a successor to Speedlighter's Handbook now that we have new radio-based gear? The answer to that is definitely yes. Um, how to photograph your orange, or also known as lighting for digital photography, is really a primer um, an entry-level book to the world of lighting and the concepts about light. So if you're struggling and just trying to understand the fundamentals of light and lighting, then that's a book that might help you down the path as well. Uh, we're going to talk about gear off and on tonight, and I just want to refer you over. Some folks said, what about this modifier? What about that modifier? Um, on Pixelated, I'm building a whole series of narrative gear pages on the gear that I use. So for instance, um, if you click over and you scroll down, you'll eventually find this page, How to Select a Speedlight. And I talk about many of the characteristics and which models of the Canon Speedlights work really well for which types of shooting. So all of that hides behind the gear tab right there on Pixelated. And if you're interested in staying in touch with what I'm doing, where I'm teaching, and new techniques and, and that sort of thing, you can just basically hit that box in the right-hand corner of Pixelated and then whenever I put out a new post, it gets emailed to you automatically. How many of you guys are here tonight because you saw it on Pixelated? A few of you, I know. So thanks for being Pixelarians. I appreciate that. All right, Pixelarians, you're all Pixelarians. All right, so we're gonna take, we're gonna take this in several parts tonight. One of the things that I wanna start with is basically to take a quick look at the Speedlight family and talk about what the 600EX and what the 600EX does and doesn't do along with its sidekick there, the STE3RT, all right? So the new Speedlight 
and the new transmitter, as you'll see in just a moment, are basically identical units, except one has the flash capability and the other just basically transmits. In terms of their form factor, the 600EX is very similar to the 580EX in its size, but the new transmitter provides an incredibly low profile way to control your off-camera lights. So if having that sight line between you and your subject is really important to you and you don't need on-axis flash, you might consider the STE3RT, I'll just call it the transmitter, you might just consider the transmitter as being a really great alternate to the 600 EXRT speed light itself because it does enable when I'm shooting, I'm doing a portrait session, it's really easy for me to look over the top of that transmitter and continue that dialogue with my subject as opposed to having to peek around the side of the speed light. Now the transmitter, which is shown on the right and the speed light on the left, are exactly the same in terms of control interface. If you know how to run the speed light, you know how to run the transmitter, okay? So now the one difference as you saw, just jumping back for a moment, the screen on the transmitter faces up, so you'll end up turning your camera to look at that screen. Not a big deal at all, all right? So this 600EX RT can do five different things. It can work as a solo speed light, a speed light on its own, all right? It can be a radio master. It can be a radio slave, and we're going to go deep into the world of radio tonight. And then it can be an optical master, and it can be an optical slave, okay? So many of you have this question. Can I use the 600 to control my 580s? And the answer is yes, but not at the same time that it's communicating in radio mode. So we're not able to take the 600 or the transmitter from our camera, communicate to a 600 off camera, and then have that 600 in turn communicate to all of our legacy speed lights. It is essentially, as you see in that big letters up there, or, it's radio or speed light, or excuse me, radio or optical. It's not radio and optical. So we're either all in for radio or we're all in for optical. The 600 goes either way. 600 goes either way. So the 600 is fully backwards compatible with all of your existing Canon speed lights and then it brings to it the new future with all of the radio enabled opportunities. The transmitter itself does one thing and one thing only. Obviously we can't use it as a speed light because it doesn't have the flash capabilities and we can't use it in optical mode. So it is only a radio master. That's its sole purpose, okay? Now, in terms of, I'm not gonna go through every point, um, this is basically a diagram, and a couple of key things to know are basically highlighted in red. The new features where the 600 differs from the 580EX is shown in red, and we're going to talk about a few of these things. So not that you guys can see the green dot, perhaps, but um, the color filter sensors, we'll talk about those. We'll talk about the remote release socket. But in every other way, when you look at the perimeter of a 600EX, other than those two features, it's very much like the 580EX2 that you may be familiar with. And then on the back, there's quite a number of new features that actually support, to great depth, the radio-enabled system. So the link lamp, which we'll talk about, the dot matrix LCD, we're going to go into detail tonight about how to push the buttons and dials of the 600, and it's largely enabled because of that new dot matrix LCD system. We have a dedicated wireless button, which also doubles as being the button for the link shooting. So that's the little button right there on the left-hand shoulder. And then the engineers fortunately took the mode button out of the function button row and made it large and easy to see. So we have an easy to push dedicated mode button. And then perhaps the most exciting thing in conjunction with the dot matrix LCD is the fact that we now have four function buttons and those four function buttons, rather than having preset purposes like we've had with our 430s and our 580s, those function buttons basically change their purpose depending upon what mode you're in. If you're shooting wireless and radio, or you're shooting wireless optically, or you're shooting non-wireless and you're in ETTL or manual. So tonight we're going to take a detailed tour of the menu systems, all right, and look at how the function of those buttons changes. So if you have a 600EX along the way, um, you'll have an opportunity, I guess you could call it sort of a sing-along, if you want to try to follow along on some of the buttons and dials.